In today's video, we're looking at one of the most recognizable breeds in the United States and diving into the history of the incredible Australian Shepherd, which, spoiler alert, isn't even a native breed to Australia. Welcome back to the Fenrir Aussie Shepherd Show. If this is your first time here, my name's Will. I'm a canine behaviorist and I'm the founder here at FenrirCanineLeaders.com. And this channel is dedicated to helping you learn everything that you could possibly ever want to know about the incredible Australian Shepherd, then how to become a high level canine leader that can raise perfect Aussie Shepherd companions. So if you love the Australian Shepherd as much as we do here at Fenrir, start your journey hitting that subscribe button and turning on the notification bell so that you'll never miss a future video. So then, let's dive into today's video and we'll explore the history of the fantastic herding dog and how it got its quite misleading name. Now then, so if you've ever been to a working ranch or rodeo in the US, you've most probably seen one of these gorgeous herding dogs. They often have a blue merle coat but come in a variety of different colour variations with many having brilliantly coloured eyes. So then the history, let's dive into it, and the ancestor of the Australian Shepherd that we know today originated far from the country of Australia where it got its name. The history of the Australian Shepherd goes back to the indigenous people that lived in the Pyrenees Mountains along the border of modern day Spain and France. The native people of the region, the Basque, were master shepherds that prim primarily raised flocks of sheep. Their shepherd dog of choice was the stock from which the modern Australian Shepherd now comes from. Hey guys, very quickly, in case you didn't know, we have our perfect puppy program. It's the program that I designed myself as a canine behaviorist to help you guys become a high level canine leader yourself and then how to be able to take your puppy from the second you bring it home all the way through to that dream of the perfect canine companion that you've always wanted. So if you want more information on that, there'll be a link down in the description box below. Thousands of people have now gone through that process to extremely high levels of success. So there's some testimonials you can go and check out more information it's all in the description box below but let's get back into the video you were just watching and in the early 1800s the basques set out for australia and its large rich flatlands which made for ideal sheep pastures along the way and while in australia other english breeds like the collie and border collie were mixed with the basque shepherd dogs the basque shepherds moved again in the late 1800s to early 1900s where they set out for the fertile lands and wild west of california in the united states and upon arriving in California with their flocks and modified shepherd dogs, the local ranchers and cowboys dubbed the dogs the Australian Shepherd, since that was the country that they had most recently come from. Now, it wasn't an accurate name, but it stuck even through to this day, and the Australian Shepherd is not registered in Australia as a native Australian breed. Since coming to California and being so sought for their livestock herding abilities and quick intelligence, the Aussie Shepherd has been a staple of cowboy life in the US. They are still one of the most popular breeds that you'll see around rodeos and on working ranches. They've also been bred in standard and mini sizes, though only a standard is used usually for livestock work. The mini version is quite popular as a trip dog since they have all the amazing qualities of their larger brethren. Now, the breed is known for their quick intelligence, loyalty and swiftness, which all aid in their extraordinarily ability to herd everything from geese to sheep to cattle. They were accepted into the American Kennel Club Herding Breed Group in 1993, and being such a newly registered breed and a long-time working dog, they are still very high energy. They thrive in homes where they have a job to do and can get a lot of mental and physical exercise. In more recent years, they've also found great success as therapy, service, guide dogs, search and rescue dogs, and drug detection dogs. And they are easily trained and can excel at canine agility, obedience, and different trick competitions. They do have a thick double coat which keeps them insulated during both hot and cold weather so they still do require a decent amount of grooming to be in the home. This is true of the smaller version as well though their coats tend to be a little bit thinner. The breed often has their tail docked and have very short crop tails naturally as a safety measure from their time as working dogs and livestock situations. 
So even though the Australian Shepherd isn't actually Australian, we love them for their unfaltering loyalty and stamina that resembles that of the Australian people. Their willingness to please and quick intelligence has earned them a top spot in the working dog category and makes them excellent canine companions for active people and working on farms. Their striking appearance and affectionate personality are hallmark traits that have made the Aussie Shepherd one of the most popular working breeds and companion breeds in the United States. So I do hope you enjoyed that quick overview of the fascinating origin and that misleading name of the Australian Shepherd. If you did enjoy it, please hit that thumbs up button. And remember, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button, turn on the notification bell. So we've got two dedicated Australian Shepherd videos coming to this channel every single week. And I cannot wait to speak to you again on the next episode of the Fenrir Australian Shepherd Show.